Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, as you can see, I'm currently in the ATL in Atlanta. I'm going to be going to the local fights here later on with Stacey McKinley. Um, I'm out here for the weekend, so it should be fun. But I wanted to talk about just Dan Dubois, because Dan Dubois is one of the top heavyweight prospects right now coming out of the UK. Not just in the UK, but just in boxing in general. He's probably, he's definitely one of the top uh heavyweight prospects out there so you know he's someone to watch he had a fight yesterday it was it was a fight that kind of flew under the radar because it wasn't a big name you know it was a, a far cry from his big domestic fight with nathan gorman which pitted him against a fellow undefeated prospect at the time in, in in gorman so he fought in this fight ebenezer and no not ebenezer scrooge but ebenezer Tetether, I don't know how to say his last name, but he's from he's from Ghana. He was 19 and 0 coming into the fight, but it was a clearly padded 19 and 0 record because he had never really fought anybody of note outside of his own country. So I had a chance to watch the fight, and, and Dubois looks good, looks good. Like you can't take you the work that's been done in the gym with Dubois, his polished skill set, the, the positive things about Dan Dubois. You can't take those things away because he he's shown these things to to to, to be very. Um, He's shown himself to be, be, be a very polished fighter at such a young age uh, in fights against higher-ranked opposition like Nathan Gorman or, or uh, Razvan Kajanu or um, Kevin Johnson, guys like that. He's already shown his levels in those fights. So I think for him, if, if this fight against uh, the heavyweight from Ghana, Ebenezer, if, if it showed anything, it just showed that he, need, he needs to step it up. He needs to, to start fighting world-level opposition because you can't be a fighter. Like right now... Um, he's ranked number eight in the uh, in the WBO. He's ranked number fifteenth in the IBF, um, and it's inexcusable, honestly, at this point that he's fighting uh, opposition at, at this level. He needs to be fighting guys ranked in the top fifteen. He needs to be fighting fighters that um, have a name that um, could offer some sort of resistance to him and, and, and improve him in the ring because. When you watch this fight, because he won via first round stoppage, like he absolutely got him out of there via first round stoppage, but. Um, you could tell. You could tell from the minute the fight started. I mean, the, the minute the fight started, you knew that this dude was gonna get iced, destroyed, and put to sleep and embarrassed. Um, they had problems with his mouthpiece before the fight even started. Usually, you gotta get punched in the mouth to have problems with your mouthpiece. But this guy in this quarter was having problems with his mouthpiece before the fight even started. Um, and, and and they were playing with his mouthpiece, and his mouthpiece fell out. And they had to put his mouthpiece back in before the fight started. So I already knew that he was not up for it. His body language was that of a fighter who was not up for for it at all and um yeah man like he just i wasn't really too impressed by the body language of uh his uh, daniel dubois opponent ebenezer you know but dubois came out he peppered him with the jab you know he's got a really good jab he peppered him with the jab uh going downstairs upstairs you know showing good punch selection good punch variation uh mixing the right hand pretty good even snuck in a low blow <laughs> which nobody the referee didn't see because there were so many punches being thrown he was able to sneak in a low blow, and 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 um, eventually, look, like look, there, there's not really a lot to dissect in that fight. I mean, it was what it was. He pretty much just 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 disposed of him like a piece of trash because um, the fight was the, the matchup was garbage. I don't want to I don't want to disrespect any fighter because I, I respect anybody at any level of boxing. I don't care if you have a hundred losses. If you have the heart and the balls to get into a boxing ring and fight somebody, I respect you. But as far as the matchup, the, the the gap in skill level was so apparent, and it was so blatant. And I think Frank Warren. I mean, for his next fight, I mean, you, you got He's got to be fighting for the British title. I know. Um, I heard that Joe Joyce was fighting Marco Huck. Like that's a fight that they were talking about. That that, that that's a fight that was supposedly supposed to happen, and you know it has to happen. I feel like Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois. If you're trying to figure out who's who in the heavyweight division at that level. You know, those are guys that we need to be fighting each other. The, the, the Joe Joyce's, the Daniel Dubois. I mean, look, if we go to the rank, rankings, I have the rankings on my computer over here. I just like, I like looking at the skyline. You know, gotta gotta enjoy this view while I can because I'm going to be going back home soon. But, um, you know, if we just look at like, let me hold it with this kid, with his hand. <sighs> Shout out to Coke. If we look at like the rankings, right? Right now, you got Daniel Dubois ranked 15th in the IBF, okay? You got Daniel Dubois ranked 8th in the WBO. So, some names that I think he should be looking at fighting, you know, you could go the route in his next fight 
a fight a couple of, of Tyson Fury opponents. So I would say he should be looking at the Otto Wallens of the world and Tom Schwartz. Like those guys, I think will be okay um, because they're ranked. Um, in the Otto Wallens case, Otto Wallens has put up a fantastic fight against Tyson Fury. So. If you're Daniel Dubois and you're looking to make a statement at this level of your career, being, I believe, he's the youngest British uh, champion of all time, he needs to, I mean, Otto Wallen would be some, somebody to look at. You know, um, Povetkin's probably going to fight Michael Hunter, so that's not an option. He's ranked 14th. Parker's fighting Chisora next. Um, maybe the winner of that fight, you know, but I'm not sure if Eddie Hearn would uh, work with Frank Warren, but, I, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like it'd be too much of a problem. You know, you got Sergey Kuzman, who's in the top 15. You got, um, there's, there's names, Adam Kalnaki, uh, Philip Hergovic, but I don't think they're going to go that route. You know, I, I would say Otto Wallen, Tom Schwartz, Oscar Rivas, um, Aj Kabayel. Those are guys that Dubois should be looking at, you know, because there's a rank fighters. They're, they're somewhat known. Um... They're, they're they're more credible than his last opponent. I mean, he literally, if you go on his box, uh, his opponent's boxer, his his opponent's was ranked three hundred and seventy first in the entire world according to box rec. He's not ranked anywhere in the top fifteen. He's not even within sniffing distance of the top fifteen of any sanctioning body. Um, I mean, he's not even he, he, this guy he fought isn't even the best heavyweight from Ghana that he's fought. I mean, he fought our Richard Larte, who's ranked number one in box rec. Uh, Richard Larte fourteen and two. Um, you know, probably bet the better of the two fighters, you know, so I want to see Daniel Dubois kick on. I want to see him push to do better things because um, he's someone that I, be I believe has the, has the ingredients to potentially hold and capture a belt, a heavyweight, a world title. But um, fights like this, I mean, if you look at his last five fights, you know, he fought Kevin Johnson, then he fought uh, Razvan Kajanu, Richard Larte, then he fought Nathan Gorman. So after the Gorman fight... You're not expecting um, a great f opponent, but this, I mean, I understand you were not going to have him fight Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua, but this, this is pretty bad. This is pretty damn bad. And I think from this point forward, like, and I'm, this is a message to uh, Frank Warren, this is a message to Daniel Dubois, UK boxing fans, UK boxing, everybody over there. Daniel Dubois, start fighting some world level opposition. Let's see, let, let, let's see how good you really are, because, um, You've shown your level already. You've shown your level at the, at, you know, you fought the tough gatekeepers and tough journeymen, and you've dispatched them. You, you've knocked out the Tom Littles. You've knocked out the Raz Van Kajanus. You've knocked out the Richard Lartes. You've knocked out Nathan Gorman. You've shown your level over there. Okay, it's been established. No, need, no, no reason to continue going down and picking the bottom of the barrel. Let's go to the year. Let's go to world level. Let's, let's see you fight, you know, guys who have actually been on a big stage before, like, like, um, I, I think Otto Wallen would be a good fight for him. Otto Wallen's a, a game heavyweight. We saw what he did with Tyson Fury. You know, I think that'd be a good, a good win for him. If he, if he, if he can stop Otto Wallen, that would, that would be a statement victory for him, in my opinion. Um, IG Caballero, not really too big on him, but he's ranked, so that, that could be a, a step in the right direction. Hell, even a Carlos Takam, who's not... Carlos Takam, who's not... Um, he's not even tied up. He, I, I don't believe he has any fights scheduled. I mean, let me check right now. Carlos Takam. Yeah, I mean, Carlos Takam, I mean, the last I heard of Takam, he was supposed to fight Usyk. And that, that fell through a while ago. But Takam, Takam would be a good option for him. Because Takam's, you know, he's challenged for world titles. You know, um, he's working with top rank now. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe... Uh, well, that'd be easy because uh, uh, Frank Warren and Bob Arum have a, a working relationship. They, have, they promote Tyson Fury together. They co-promote Tyson Fury together. So now that Takam is signed with top rank, easy fight to make. Easy fight to make. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that. He should be fighting Carlos Takam. Um, Carlos Takam, you know, Otto Wallen, God, someone like that. I think that, that'd, be, that'd be a good next fight for him. See where he's at. See what he can do against that level. And then after that, step him up even more. Because uh, he's, he's, he's too talented for the, for, the, for the, you know, Nathan Gormans and, and Kevin Johnsons and Roz Von Pajano. He's proven his level there. So that's just my take on this fight. We need world-level opposition. No more picking the bottom of the barrel. If we, if we wanted, if we wanted that, we would just go to a, re a regular club show. But this is Dan Dubois. This is, uh, I believe, he's the youngest British heavyweight title holder. You know, to win, win that, win that, um, the Lions Dell belt. So, got big expectations of Dan Dubois. Got big. Um, he should. Have, I'm sure he has big ambitions himself. And I don't think going half around with a domestic level. Heavyweight from Ghana is going to do anything for his career, other than maybe mas massage his confidence and his ego a little bit, which sometimes fighters need, but they got to step up a bit more. No more of that 
will lower from this point forward. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below about Daniel Dubois and his fight yesterday. Make sure you take, take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel in the ATL, the skyline. Jesus, I'm just I'm mesmerized right now. That's why I'm just parking my ass here and sitting here. But like I said, you know, till next time, guys, take care.